Welcome to Offside and Out of Bounds. Thank you for joining us from Spotify, Apple, or the podcast platform of your choice. I am Junior, bringing you today the fifth installment of our 2021 MLB season preview show with the NL Central. We're going to, well, we have been uh, previewing a division a day leading up to our live show on YouTube, which can be found on our channel at Offside and Out of Bounds at 9 p.m. on March 31st. Join myself and my partner in crime, Offside Adam, where we will break down the league, talk about who we like, who we don't, and our picks for the divisions and eventual World Series champ. Now, the format for today and over the last four days has been breaking down each team, who they've added, who they've lost, our concerns and where things can go wrong, what they need to do to to stay competitive, and who we're going to be excited to watch, who we aren't excited to watch, and where we think they're going to finish. Let's go! Father, please forgive me for I have sinned. My name is Steve Bartman, and I made a huge mistake. I don't know how to rectify it. The Chicago Cubs, 34 and 26 last year, and lost in the wild card to the Marlins. Breaking this team down, they are currently sitting at the 18th spot in the preseason power rankings and have been quite little busy beavers over the summer. Zach Davies has been added. Uh, Reginald Presidio, and that was both in the U Darvish trade. They've also brought on Shelby Miller, Austin Romine, Joe Biagini, Jock Peterson, Jake Arrieta, Cameron Mabin, who they then released, Jake Marisnik, Ryan Tapera, and Eric Sogard, who they lost. Uh, the aforementioned Mabin, after they signed him, they released him. They lost U Darvish, Tyler Chatwood, Billy Hamilton, Jose Quintana, Jason Kipnis, John Lester, Albert Almora, Cal Schwarber, uh, Coley Allen retired, and Calvin Herrera retired. Our concerns for this team. Now, the Cubs have a solid infielder, sorry, infield catcher to third, filled with dynamic defensive and offensive players. The major concern here is going to be that starting staff in the bullpen. Rolling out a five of Kyle Hendricks, a pass prime Jake Arrieta, Zach Davies, Trevor Williams, and Adbert Azale does not scream the staff of a contender. You know, I would have liked this team a lot more if they still had you Darvish here. The bullpen outside of Kimbrell is, you know, I'd say mediocre at best. Where things can go wrong. You know, health is a number one, always in a priority for all teams. But if they cannot get max efforts and move that C-minus bullpen to at least a B, it might be tough to compete outside of this division. What they need to do to stay competitive. You know, if the middle and long relief have issues with the long ball and can't pass that game from the starters to Kimbrell, it's going to be a tough year. But if the starters can go longer and use the bullpen less and maximize Kimbrell's efficiency, they should be in good shape. The offense will be there with this group. The offense is very balanced and they do have a lot of pop. Who are excited to watch? You know, definitely excited to see what Jock Pedersen is going to do now that he's out of the shadow of the Hollywood sign. Jock had a lot of protection in the lineup in L.A., and he's maybe even going to have more protection in Chicago with the likes of Rizzo, Brian, and Baez, who we aren't excited to watch. Uh, not excited to see Jake Arrieta. Jake Arrieta, you know, he's like a lost puppy who comes back to Chicago every time he goes and has a bad year. You know, if he can catch lightning in a bottle and contribute close to what you were getting from you, Darvish, we know we might change our mind about this, but we don't see that happening. Where we think they're going to finish you know, the Cubs are going to be right there. They aren't. There aren't any other powerhouses in this division, and considering the fact that they sent four teams to the postseason last year, you know, the Cubs should be should be right there competing for the division crown, and we see them in those low to mid-90s for win totals. Stay cold. Pony boy. Stay cold. The St. Louis Cardinals, 30-28, and 28, and they lost in the NL wildcard to the Padres. Breaking this team down, coming in at number 11 in the preseason power rankings, they did arguably land the biggest prize this offseason. So who they added? Nolan Arenado. Don't really need to go any further than that. They did make a few minor moves, but nothing that's going to move the interest needle. Who they lost was Matt Wieters and Colton Wong. Now, our concerns for this team is the starting staff outside of Flaherty is a bit iffy. You know, Mikolas is on the shelf right now, as is Kim, and Wainwright is getting dusty old. So, not sure what they're going to get out of him or Gant. 
They also had a log jam at closer with Andrew Miller leading the pack, but a lot of heavy arms. It's going to put the rest of that bullpen kind of into a bit of a an issue and not certain how they're going to translate into that longer middle relief. You know, a bullpen is absolutely a necessity for this team, and they're going to have to figure that out. Now, Miller has proven that he can go a couple, but not certain you're going to get seven innings out of every starter on this staff for the entire year where things can go wrong. You know, at this point with Miller being the linchpin of that bullpen, if he gets taxed or overutilized, this team could be in trouble and fall back quickly. The good thing is, is they do have a lot of other heavy arms in there, and at least Pittsburgh's in the division, so there's absolutely no chance of them finishing last. What they need to do to stay competitive, they need to figure out the bullpen. If that gets sorted out, there shouldn't be a whole lot of issues. The offensive load will obviously be carried by Goldschmidt, Arenado, with some contributions from uh, Harrison Bader and Matt Carpenter. Who we're excited to watch. You know, definitely excited to see Nolan Arenado escape that POW camp in Colorado. This is definitely going to be a huge bonus for his career. You know, arguably one of the best three bags in the game. It's going to be nice to see him get a bit of national spotlight now. Who we aren't excited to watch. Not really excited to watch this pitching staff. I don't think they have enough to get it. They didn't do enough of this offseason to get better either. Especially considering they fleece Colorado for Arenado. Perhaps they were having a bit of a hangover or a drunken stupor over the fact that they got him and forgot to address the other needs of this team. Where we think they're going to finish. You know, they won't be Pittsburgh bad, but they aren't going to run away with this division either. You know, we are looking at them in the mid to high 80s for win total. I think the game of Tetris is a, a very underrated game. Have another sloppy job. The Cincinnati Reds, 31-29, lost in the NL wildcard to the Braves. Breaking this team down, they are currently sitting quite high in the number 21 spot of the preseason power rankings. Uh, Who they added this year, Sean Doolittle and Tyler Nyquin. Who they lost, uh, unfortunately, Cy Young winner Trevor Bauer. Our concerns, you know, they didn't do much to the team that lost their ace. The Braves showed them how important pitching is in the postseason, as that was an absolute duel between these two teams. And I don't think they did enough to improve that now their pitching was solid in the playoffs but losing an arm like bauer can definitely hurt especially if you don't have anyone else to pick up and eat the innings that he's leaving behind they are also plagued with injuries right now some minor but heading into the year with nine guys nursing injuries can be a bit of getting a a bit tough to start getting a good start of the year where things can go wrong rolling out a staff of castillo gray is a good one-two punch but you know, Mally, Wiley, Lorenzen are going to have to have great years and pick up the slack left by Bauer. If they don't, there could be lengthy losing streaks in Cincinnati due to that starting five and a mediocre at best bullpen where they need to stay competitive. They need to get great years out of the back end of the rotation. They need the bullpen to be solid, but most importantly, they need hits and timely hitting. They lost the brace because they couldn't hit. Their pitching pretty much kept them in every game in that series. Who are excited to watch? Joey Votto is closing in on 2K hits. 300 home runs and 1,000 RBI totals, which is great milestones for the kid from Etobicoke. For 15 years, he has been a driving force for scouts coming up to Canada, and his pure love of the game and staying competitive is wonderful. But does he have enough in the tank to get to that 400 home run mark and the 3K hit mark? These will most certainly secure him as the 18th Canadian to be enshrined in Cooperstown, but we think his impact on the game, if he doesn't hit these milestones, he should still be enshrined. Who we aren't excited to watch? The pitching staff after Castillo and Gray have pitched are the sore spots for this team, as well as the bullpen. But if they get nothing out of them, it could be a long year. But I will say it again. At least Pittsburgh's in the division, so last place is an impossibility. Where we think they're going to finish. I see them in the high 70s, low 80s for win totals and maybe competing for a wild card. (laughs) Yes, please. It is. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake which is Algonquin for good play. The Milwaukee Brewers, 29-31, and 31, lost to the Dodgers in the wild card. Breaking this team down, they are currently sitting on the number 15 spot of the preseason power rankings. Who they've added this offseason? Derek Fisher, Jordan Zimmerman, Colton Wong, Travis Shaw, Jackie Bradley Jr. Who they lost? Not much but a few minor pieces off the 40-man roster. Our concern here, they definitely solidified the rest of their L field with bringing in Jackie Bradley Jr., and he quickly will become a fan favorite in Milwaukee. But the starting five needs some work. We, we're not loving it, and if they can't get a solid five to six innings out of them, it could be another long year. 
if they don't stay healthy and they're definitely they definitely have a track record with Yelich and Kane, considering there is no one of that caliber to replace them, they may end up getting a lot of playing time from Derek Fisher, who after leaving Houston has had trouble catching the ball in Toronto and had several highlights of him being smashed in the face by the ball on routine pop ups. Google it. Have a laugh. Where things can go wrong. If the outfield can't stay healthy and they can't get production from them, it's going to be tough to stay in games. Outside of Yelich, Kane, and Bradley Jr., maybe add in Keston Hira, there is not a whole lot of offense that moves the needle. What they need to do to stay competitive. They need everyone healthy, and they need the starting staff to maximize every outing. They have a decent bullpen, so they may need to lean on that a bit this year. Who we're excited to watch. Outside of Yelich, you know, we'll definitely be excited to watch the mid-air acrobatics of Jackie Bradley Jr. Hopefully he's going to have a great year outside the shadow of the green monster. Who we aren't excited to watch. Starting pitching, two through five. It could be a long year in Milwaukee, so hopefully the offense can get that Brewer sliding down the slide just to ease the fans' pain a little bit. Where we think they're going to finish. We see them in the high 70s to low 80s in terms of win total, and maybe depending on how the rest of this league does, they could be contending for a wild card. And we're going to send things over to Jan Jansen, who's on the street in Pittsburgh, trying to get a reaction from some fans about the Pittsburgh Pirates this year. Uh, hi, this is Jen Jensen from ESPN Pittsburgh. I uh, wanted to know if you might be interested in talking about the Pittsburgh Pirates. Man, get out of here. Oh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. 19-41 and 41, missed the playoffs last year. Breaking this team down, they are currently sitting in dead last in the power rankings. It's honestly where they should be. It's hard to believe that a few short years ago they were competitive. After pretty much a fire sale, they are returning with only rookie Cabrian Hayes. Who they added? Trevor Cahill, and they re-signed Todd Fraser. Who they've lost? James Tyon, Musgrove, Josh Bell, Chris Archer, on and on and on and on and on. Our concerns? You know, we don't have any. This is a basement team, and they're going to be for the foreseeable future. Where things can go wrong? You know, there isn't much to say other than we think they already went wrong. What they need to do to stay competitive? They won't be. And, you know, there isn't much that they can do about it. Teams are going to come to Pittsburgh, they're going to start winning streaks, and they're going to continue winning streaks, and it's going to be a very long year at Three Rivers. Who we're excited to watch? Probably the lone bright spot in Pittsburgh, and perhaps the one that they're going to try and build around for the next few years is Cabrian Hayes. Great prospect at third base, definitely coming up at the right time for him. Uh, hopefully we don't get the losing to affect his, his mindset too much. Who we aren't excited to watch? The Pittsburgh Pirates where we think they're going to finish. You know, off, uh, they're going to be in dead last. They're probably going to end up losing between 110 to 125 games this year. The wrap. The wrap. We have this as a two-horse race between Chicago and St. Louis, with Chicago taking the division crown, St. Louis potentially playing for a wild card. Then we're going to insert the Cincinnati Reds in third, the Brewers in fourth, and of course in the basement and for the next few years, the Pittsburgh Pirates. But most of all, we are hoping for a nice season where everyone is safe and healthy and we can get back to some sense of normal. For everyone at Offside and Out of Bounds, I am Junior, and this has been your NL Central Preview. Please check back tomorrow as we will finish off with the NL West. And we will complete our division roundup, and we will then be having our MLB preview show, which will stream live on YouTube on Wednesday, March 31st at 9 p.m. Please check Spotify, iTunes, or the podcast platform of your choice at midnight for the audio version of the full preview show. Thanks for listening. Support local. Stay safe. And see you real soon. Thank you for joining us from Apple, Spotify, or the podcast platform.